You're listening to the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS podcast with hosts John and Pemba and James Grande. What is going on, everybody? John and Pemba here with James Grande. Welcome to the Better Baseball MLB DFS podcast and live stream. We are recording here, giving you our first look at Tuesday's 14 game main slate, James. We had 10 games on a Monday. 14 games now on a Tuesday. MLB comes out firing out of their all-star break with some big slates here, which is fine for us. We don't mind it. Big player pools. We do have Coors Field on this slate. Get some more potential weather across the country here. Colorado, including, showing a little rain symbol. St. Louis has a rain symbol. Cincinnati, Baltimore. So seems like we can't escape the water, the wet weather here. Uh, across the U.S. I know living up in the Northeast here, uh, it's going to be another rain-filled week as well. So uh, hopefully it doesn't impact too much of what we're looking to do from a DFS perspective. But my guy, 14 games here to kick off the Tuesday. 14 games, some very interesting bad pitchers on the slate. Uh, not a lot of top-tier names either after you get past Evaldi, who's struggling, Mitch Keller, who's Mitch Keller, and then, like, kind of just, you know, like good yeah. pitchers in not great spots. So it's going to be a very interesting 14-game uh, slate that includes Coors Field. And um, it's, a it's you know, it's a weird one, John. Yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. It's a weird one because there's a lot of bad pitching, but we don't know how many games, games are going to be. One guy over 10K? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of bad pitching, especially when you get to near to the bottom of the list. There's good – the best two hitting environments in the league on this slate, like – um, there's a lot to dissect, so let's not waste any more time. Yeah, let's uh, give a quick shout out here to our partners over at Real Time Fantasy Sports. Uh, go to rtsports.com slash alarm. Use promo code alarm23. That'll get you a 100% deposit match uh, up to $200 for new users there. Uh, DFS Pick'em Games, we know, of course, uh, that they also have all of those best ball contests uh, that we got going over there. Uh, you can play it real time daily, uh, pick them contests. You set a lineup of player props, hit them all, and win. Uh, NFL, MLB, NBA, PGA, the Open Championships this week. I'll have uh, our RT Sports uh, PGA pick them props out on Wednesday. So be sure to check that out over on our YouTube and ch- Twitter channel feeds there. Uh, you go to RT Sports slash alarm. Uh, again, first time depositors get 100% instant match up to on $200 with deposit code alarm23. Uh, please play responsibly. If you need help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. So, uh, James, they are partners over at RT Sports doing a lot of great things. Highly recommend everybody go and check them out. Uh, let's turn our attention now over to the DraftKings main slate here again. 14 games on tap. Pitching. You talked about it. It's, uh, it's interesting, right. right? Evaldi at home, but against Tampa. Keller at home against Cleveland. We got Edward Cabrera coming off of the IL to face St. Louis at $9,700. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Uh, Joe Musgrove against Toronto and Alec Manoa back on the mound again for Toronto coming off of an actually an okay start last time out for them. $9,600 for Musgrove. Taylor Wells against the Dodgers at $94. Giolito, who could potentially be wearing Dodger blue soon at ninety-three. <laughs> $100. He's going up against the Woeful Mets. Sorry, Breland. Uh, Bailey Ober at $9,100 going up against Seattle, but they got Wu on the mound here. That's your 9K and above tier, and I got to be honest with you, man, I don't I don't, I don't, like any of it. Maybe Giolito. Maybe. But, like, I don't I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, I there's like not a lot to like. There's not a lot to like. Bailey Ober? Bailey Ober probably? I would say Ober is definitely up there. Um, he's been fantastic. And, you know, early in the year, there was the peripheral stats that maybe suggested he was pitching above his actual level, but that has not been the case. He just continues to pitch well. Um, there's games where he slightly struggles, like in the Boston Detroit starts, you know, eight strikeouts in the Detroit start to make up for the three earned runs. He still struggles through that Red Sox start, still gets you six innings. Like yeah. he's giving you a pretty safe floor at this point. I mean, he's had one start with less than double digit. He's had, he's made how many starts? 14, 13 of them. He scored double digit fantasy points. So like he's been super reliable in that, in that aspect. I think Mitch Keller's in play. Like the guardians again are, are kind of faltering and Keller, you know, for his last six starts have been great. 
two bad ones mixed in there. The Dodgers, like that's a tough matchup Mm -hmm. and Milwaukee can be annoying at times. Uh, We talked about their inconsistencies all year, but in Arizona, seven scoreless home against the Padres, six innings, one run in Miami, who has been a playoff team the entire year. Um, Like he's had some tough matchups and has fared well for the last six, 20 fantasy points. Cleveland's not an entirely tough matchup for him. Um, those would probably be the two guys I'd go over 6K or 9K. Yeah. Giolito, you know, he's okay. If he even makes the start, like, we don't even know when he's going to be traded. Yeah. He's going to be traded at some point. Like, the White Sox are dead in the water. Um, not You can get to Evaldi, I guess, but he's didn't exactly pitch all that lights out going into the break. He had that amazing stretch um, in May yeah. and June, or April and May, whatever that stretch of – Starts was kind of limped into the break, especially against the Red Sox. And um, so you can get there if you want, but I, I think it's yeah. Cooper and, and Keller for me over 9K. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand a lot of people probably looking to go to Keller for sure. Um, again, I, I don't mind Giolito, but Ober definitely stands out. Uh, guys under 9K, maybe it gets a little bit more interesting here. Uh, Herman had another no no going uh, mm-hmm. for a bit, and then he uh, ended up get, giving it up. And then uh, you know, it's uh, kind of down from there. But then look what you think of Chicago. Six innings, one hit allowed, got taken out after 74 pitches uh, in that game. Uh, was there weather involved? Or did they just pull them, pull them at 74? Like, why would they yank the chain so soon there? Uh, because he has control issues and started walking people in that inning. And um, the Yankees have a top three bullpen in the ERA in the league. So why not go to them, you know? So... We've seen, I mean, look, we've seen Domingo Herman's inconsistencies at play the entire season. Um, he followed up, he followed up 15 earned runs with a perfect game. And then yeah. he came back out the next start, couldn't even get through five innings, right? Like right. that's just been Domingo Herman's MO the entire year. I'm not going there. I, I'm, I have outside of the one game, I think you were away and me and Colby wanted to target Domingo Herman. And guess what? Had a perfect game. Yeah. I've not lost money from not fading Domingo Herman, and I'm not going to lose any money. Sure. Um, does Scoobal ever get over the pitch count here? He's up to 63 pitches last time out. He's been phenomenal. He's been the Tarek Scoobal of old. He gets an interesting spot here against Kansas City. Um, but you got to be worried about the pitch count. Yeah, I'm definitely a little worried about the pitch count. Um, it's on the rise. We should get you know somewhere around 70 pitches, so – uh, I could see a scenario where you get to school at 84 because the strikeout upside against Kansas city is there, especially when you have 11 strikeouts in your first eight innings. Like we know what he can do. Um, so I think school is fine. Um, but if we're talking about just pure strikeouts in this like tier, like Brian Wu at 7,900 makes all the sense in the world. Seattle, you know, at home gets the team who strikes out the most in baseball against yeah. right-handed pitching. And Brian Wu has, outside of that Houston start. And I, I won't include the Texas start because he got shelled and every game he's thrown at least 80 pitches in, which is all but one since his debut, he's had five or more strikeouts. And in four of the six over 80, he's had seven or more. So um, Wu has tremendous strikeout appeal. He's going to be very popular here, uh, but I can't fault anyone that wants to get to him because the, he has the best upside, I think of this year. Sure. I like it. $7,900 is also a great price tag. Um, I don't mind going uh, Logan Allen, a guy that you like um, yep. against Pittsburgh here. That I, I'm not shying away from that matchup. You know, obviously he's drawing the tougher pitching opponent going up against Keller. You also have to look at that pitch count or, or the innings for him lately. You know, not going too deep in games, four innings against Oakland, three and two thirds against Kansas City. Pitch count's been fine. It's just like he's not, he's throwing too many pitches in too few innings here for us. Uh, but the talents there in Pittsburgh is just they're 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 settling into what yeah they they're, bad. They're, they're bad they're bad so. they're bad uh, so I don't actually again I haven't ever pitched Logan Allen this year and they've been high on him uh, I think I think we can look there um, attacking Yankees lately hasn't ever been a terrible option I don't know how you feel about Patrick Sandoval coming off of a good start against San Diego got lit up against the White Sox but had a shot out against Kansas City I mean obviously the up and downs of a Patrick Sandoval here but. Again, the Yankees lineup is just trash. So It really is the up and downs of a Patrick Sandoval because he's been pretty bad outside of that last start. I- I'll throw one more hat into the ring. I will say Alec Manoa here. The Padres offense has been terrible. Like, I- say what you want, all the trade 
rumors swirling. Like, he looked really good in his return. And was it Detroit? Yes. But maybe we figured something out. He had right? 11 Ks in that double-A uh, rehab start, right? And then they called him up, and he six innings, uh, uh, and earned an 8 Ks there. So uh, I'm with you. I mean, we I was looking at it earlier today. You know, has there ever been a team that spent this much money that's been this bad? I mean, right down the list, Machado, Tatis, Soto, Bogarts, Darvish, Musgrove, Snell. They paid Hater like Cronenworth got the a huge deal. This year? Like – it's in the Mets and the Padres are right up there with each right other. and, and like all of that money resulting in an, in an under 500 record and now John Heyman's out there saying that they're open to trading soda like I know, you know crazy. <laughs> like you know Jesus so yeah I'm with you there Manoa at 7100 is interesting risky obviously but interesting yeah. I, I definitely don't mind uh if you're multi line of thing there's that there's that one uh, can't do Taj Bradley. The strikeout upside's great, but just not this spot. And the yep. he's too wild, um, so that makes it a little tough here. I don't want to do Elder against Arizona. Um, Every everything after Manoa is just disgusting. Could I you could you get I, to Carrasco? That would that would be. I would say Carrasco is the lone guy down here I'd be willing to play coming off his best start of the year. And what what have we said about the White Sox all year? Right now, but here's the thing. Carrasco, you've also been split. the first one to yeah. say there's been a reverse splits. What do the White Sox have? All yeah. righties. Their entire lineup is ben like Intendi. just full <laughs> littered of yeah, they have Ben Intendi. They have I mean Eloy hit the IL Shocker. Like that's obviously yeah, that's obviously, you know a downside. Well, I guess not the IL, but he got yeah. hurt again. Assuming an IL stint is near um, what do they have? They have Colas, and he's been yeah. bad, and they have Sheets. So, like, I know what you're saying because Carrasco ha- is coming off his best start. We just have to remember, like, he does struggle versus yeah. righties. That, that's the one the sure. one thing. All right, so that's how I look at the starting pitching again. I think we're both in agreement here. We like both pitchers in the Minnesota-Seattle game, whether it be over or woo. Yep. Uh, and then you're kind of kind of dark throwing around. Keller's the other spend up. Um, Scooble, yep. maybe if we think that he's going to get a pitch count limit, if he comes out and says he's throwing 75 pitches, do you have interest at 8,400? Absolutely. Yeah, I kind of agree with you there. Um, are we fading Monty at home against Miami? Um, fading Monty at home? I mean, we didn't really highlight him. He's been very good. I'm not against playing Monty. I'm not, ag- I think there's merit to playing Monty. I think there's. Miami is really good against lefties, so like, I think there is merit to both sides of that sure. argument. No, we didn't we didn't talk about Hunter Brown, but he's in course. So, um, always, yeah, I mean, no the strikeout potential is great. Seven, seven, six, and eight—the last four for him. So, it's just whether or not he can dance around the, the Rockies and Coors lineup. So, yeah. um, all right, let's go to hitters. Talk to me about the infield. Give me your top infield hitters for this slate. Yeah, so obviously 14 games. There's going to be a lot. Uh, I think Otani and Olsen stand out right off the bat. If you want to. You know, I don't. We don't need to elaborate well, too much. But Otani gets Friday, hits a grand slam in first inning. So hits a grand nice. slam, um, and now we get Davies, who struggled mightily against left-handed bats specifically. And he's a garbage human he's being. Been bad so against, it's always good and he's a garbage. Yeah, so it's great to stack against him in Atlanta in this game. Truist ranks sixth highest in um, runs per game. You know, I think it's a kind of a slam dunk for Olsen here. Same for Otani. Same thing can be said for Otani. Rafael Devers should be back in the Boston lineup after missing Monday's game. Um, I love the Cincinnati Reds yeah. in this spot. So Ellie De La Cruz, who's now only third base eligible, by the way, uh, we lost, even though we called up uh, CES. Yes, so all pro third getting, base only. So thank, thanks for now, that, Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. So now third base only Ellie De La Cruz, um, 6,500 against, against Anthony Discofani, who is another guy just struggling specifically against one split. Yeah, you have Votto there at forty six hundred dollars um, as well. Looks pretty good. Yep, I think I think the Reds are going to be a pretty popular uh, decision here. And then, um, you know, I love tacking some Michael Grove. You know, that's one yeah. of my favorite things to do in the world here. Uh, just looking at Baltimore, I mean, they're full, chock full of guys. If you want to spend up a catcher, at least heating up three thirty three over his last ten games. Gunnar Henderson, you know, he has started to heat up again. Eight fifty OPS over his last ten. So. I like both those lefties in Rutschman and Henderson. Michael Grove, 
um, against yeah. left-handed bats this year. Still continues to be trash. 345 average, 1,000 OPS, 430 Woba allowed to lefties. We know the Orioles have a boatload of lefty bats. Mullen, Frazier, uh, Henderson, Santander will Santander. bat from the left side of the plate. Adley will bat from the left side of the plate. So, yeah. I'm... Kowser, Kowser, their yep. call-up. O'Hearn, Frazier, like they have a lot of O'Hearn, too. Yeah, I keep forgetting about O'Hearn. Always, I was good. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think I think the the, the O's are going to be a pretty fun team uh, on this slate. Um, other guys, for me, I think if we're looking sort of at the top of the position here, um, I'm kind of with you there with the Reds. I think there's some good options to target them um, there. I, I also think that we could go um, against Trevor Williams here with the Cubs. Um, you know, Morrell, we know, has a lot of power against right-handed pitching. Uh, could see if maybe a, a spark for a home run out of him here. He's second and third base eligible. Nice. We're getting infield yeah. eligibility yeah. for Morrell second now. Second and huh? third base eligible here uh, for Christopher Morrell. Um, Bobby Witt's down to 4,400. I know I like Scooble, but also Witt's been hammering lefty. So um, yeah. I, I'm kind of feeling uh, feeling that price uh, tag as well with some of the guys that you've mentioned here. Yeah. Um, so Love Morell, we know he's a righty split, and Williams has actually been worse against the righty split this year. Um, I like that. He's just kind of slowed down a little bit, but we know he's uh, he's due. He is due. He is due. And it feels like his due date is, and not in like a pregnancy sure. way, but his due date here is uh, on Tuesday, John. So I'm with you on the Christopher Morello. And then the value, value guys, you've mentioned some of them already. O'Hearn, obviously, you're going to find his way probably into some lineups yep. here. We talked about uh, Encarnacio Strand. We'll see if he plays back to back days or not um, here yep. for the Reds, but he's still min price. So there's going to be some options. Uh, for us there. Let's see, look at the catcher position. We don't ever really give the catcher position enough love uh, here. Anybody sticking out at the Rogers. Rogers gets a lefty. Yeah. Rogers looks pretty good. I like that. Uh, Haas gets a lefty in Lynch. Uh, I know. I know. I don't think this year that that splits played out as much. No, it but hasn't. In the, you know, basically his entire career it has. So it uh, could be a good spot there. And you mentioned Rogers as well, obviously. And then you can go spend up for the. For the uh, Braves, they're, I mean, Murphy and Darno are both just elite, elite bats. So, uh, anybody else in the infield for you? Um, I like some Tigers value getting going up against Lynch. Sure. Uh, Andy Abanez has been good against um, left handed okay. pitching. Torkelson hits lefties. We didn't well, mention Houston, Rogers. but I mean, they're in course. So, I mean, Dubon, Abreu, Bregman, Pena is on the IL, right? Did he go on the IL? Uh, he's day to day. Um, tweak something Amstring, on yeah. Sunday, so nothing official. Abreu thirty seven hundred. That's really good value. Yanier Diaz forty four. Dubon forty two. Abreu is the cheapest infielder that the uh, that the Astros have. And the, and the Astros players. are pitching a Noah Davis here, uh, who just gave up eleven hits, nine earned in his last start against the Angels. He's giving up. He's giving up a total of 21 earned runs on 23 hits over his last uh, nine innings pitched. Is that not good? No, his last three fantasy oh, point okay. games: minus 14, <laughs> minus two, minus 10. So, uh, Houston, <laughs> we have a Houston, problem. Houston, Col- Col- no. Col- Colorado, you got a problem? Yeah, Colorado? Uh, yeah, uh, there's Houston problem. Anyway, so anyways, yeah, Houston. Houston guys are all pretty are all looking pretty <laughs> good. Um, you know, Bregman at 49, the most expensive of the group. Um yep. so let's see, when's Altuve going back? Altuve ran the bases before Sunday. Uh will travel, uh, but he will require more time before he's able to go into rehab. So no Altuve. Uh did we get Jordan back yet? No, yep. Jordan worked out in Houston, uh, needs a rehab assignment. So moving on to outfield, uh, Kyle Tucker, <laughs> six. Yes, number one, number one play, $6, number one play dollars. Play. He's going to be so popular. Dude, we've said this forever. When he is streaking, he is effing streaking, and there's nothing you can do right. about it. Like when he's this good, there's nothing you can do about yeah. Kyle Tucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so in on Kyle Tucker, uh, in on Acuna, 66 against Davies here. Why not? 
Uh, guy is an absolute menace when he wants to be two homers and a stolen base against the White Sox a couple nights ago. Uh, the show, hey, Otani show, 6,400 boogie bets. Yep. Uh, Corbin Carroll against Elder, eh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, let's see. If you're not in Amanoa, there's some um, Tatis and Soto are down here. I would definitely play Luis Robert, 57, especially if the Carrasco True. splits continue. Yeah, to... let's just pull those out. We mentioned them, but let's pull them up. Carlos Carrasco splits on the year against righties versus lefties. Uh, righties are hitting 538, slugging 874, OPS, 12, 9 of the 12 home runs allowed by Mr. Carlos Carrasco has been hit by the right-handed hitter. So. I don't know how many home runs Luis Robert has hit against righties this All year. All of them? 21 of 27. He has a, so he has elite numbers against lefties, but like obviously the sample is a lot smaller, yeah. but that is a ton of home runs. Yeah, I'm pulling up the uh, – let's see here. Uh, Woba against le- righties, uh, 372. Uh, Woba allowed for uh, for our guy here. Uh, 2.4 yep. home runs per nine, a 640 FIP against right-handed hitters for Carrasco. So things could be getting – so things might be getting yeah. worse for Yeah, Carrasco. he's actually not even really doing all that well against lefties anymore either. So um, maybe I take back what I said earlier. I mean, it's still not great, but before it was very bad. He was very, right. very good against righties – sorry, against lefties. Uh, not even really the case anymore. 5-4 uh, FIP, 5-4 X FIP there. Um, a home run per nine against lefties now as well. So, um, yeah, things other than the most recent start for Carrasco starting to go down. So uh, I'm with you there. You can play any of the guys over 6K, but we definitely like Kick Tucker. Ian Coors, as will everybody else. Lewis Robert, uh, another gun name about 5K, I think is perfectly fine to be in play. Uh, moving down into the mid-tier range here. Um, I'm get on the Reds. You want to go Fraley or Frito? Both of them are, are going to be fine for yep. me. Um, Bellinger hits everybody. He's $4,600. Santander, we talked yep. about. Uh, also, someone that's going to be uh, probably pretty popular in our stacks tonight if we're going there against Grove. So that, that, that one works out. Solaire gets a lefty. I know Monty's been good, yes. but he's $4,500 against Jordan Montgomery here. Yeah, he's been insane against lefties. Um, against left handed pitching this year, 333 average. John. He has he has sixty six at bats against lefties this year. He has ten home runs. He has every six at bats against lefties. He's getting a home run. Pretty like, good, by my man. That's crazy. To quote, to quote our guy Mark, math checks out. But. Math checks out. That is insane. So yeah, Jorge Soler, and this is the cheapest we've seen him in maybe beginning of the yeah. year when he put like first slate of the year. Like I don't no, know for sure. So uh, I, I'm with you. Uh, on there, someone just homing for Miami. Let's see who's who's the my De La Cruz homing for Miami, not Solaire. So, not sure where we're at there. Uh, other guys in the mid tier range. Um, I think I mean, got Jock Jams in Cincinnati against Weaver. That one feels pretty good. Jock Peterson yep. here, Confo- dude. Go look at right now, yeah, Conforto. Go look at San Francisco's prices in the they're outfield. all free. I bet they're the first, they're like the first fourth team. Uh, I mean, what are we doing? Gaz is 3K. Mayfield, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing, dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They all have good numbers against righties. What are we yeah. doing? Yep, yeah, yeah. Well, what's Weaver doing this year? We, we thought he was going to get, like, BFA'd at one point. So He's been bad. He's, uh, he's been see, bad. Luke Weaver this year against lefties. Uh, 507 slug, 849 OPS. Uh, righties are just hammering him to 339 average, a 631 slug, and a thousand OPS on the year against Luke Weaver. Holy. So, uh, prayers up, uh, for our guy, <laughs> guy Luke Weaver here in this spot. Um, again, they're gonna throw a lot of lefties at him just for that lineup, just for the way their lineup is built, like yep. Levante Wade and yep. Bailey and Peterson and Conforto and, 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 and Sable. Sable, right? Like, but, like, I don't know, Wilmer Floor is my play. J.D. Davis is probably going to play. So, like, you throw some righties in there. So, Is Chris Murphy – he's not a traditional starter, or is he, for the Red Sox? No, he's not. Okay. He worked 67 pitches. Maybe they're working him up to be a starter. Just looking at some Oakland guys, like Brent Rooker, back on our Oakland-ish, you know. 
Rooker still can hit lefties well, but uh, there's not much else that we really need to really dip our toes in until unless you see something like really interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Um, let's uh, go. Will Will Benson yeah, 2700 yeah, not... obligatory Benson oh, shout. Uh, we'll find some more value when these lineups come out. Obviously, uh, Aaron Hicks 2500 bucks going to hit from the left side. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, all of that will be fine here as well. All right, uh, give me your home run call. Home run call is going to be Ellie De La Cruz. Okay, top stack. Reds. Cincinnati Reds. Okay. Value stack. I'm going to go Baltimore as my little off off the path uh, stack. I don't think a lot of people. I mean, you know, you know, I love playing Baltimore in spots where nobody does. Uh, value play today then. Value play today. I'll stick with Ryan O'Hearn with Baltimore and star of the night. I'll go with Mr. Dale. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, my top stack of the day, let's go Atlanta against Davies. Uh, okay. My home run call will be Matt Olson again. Let's ride it. Let's keep it going here. Uh, my contrarian stack, I mean, I got, I'll just go San Francisco then. You go Cincinnati, I'll go San Francisco on the flip side. Yeah, that's a good one. That that game's gonna be that game's gonna, gonna be get good. rained out, unfortunately. Probably it might also it might also get, might also get rained, rained out. out. Uh, start with that will be Acuna, so we'll just rock it there. Uh, let's build a lineup. Keller, I guess. Let's build a lineup. Keller and Wu. We don't have to. No, no, no. no. Keller no. and Wu. Oh, I guess because we don't want to use pitchers against each other, right. right? I guess. Yeah, let's go Keller, Keller and Wu. Keller and Wu. Okay. Because it, sure, I would definitely say Ober and Wu would be would have been the. We got uh, 4K, so let's go O'Hearn. Oh, they took away O'Hearn's other eligibility. Yeah, it sinks. I know. You can't use him at – I know, because then you can't play Olsen. Yeah. Uh, all right, whatever. Um, what's, our other, what's our other value here? Uh, Hicks, I guess. Yeah, Hicks. Uh, we could play uh, Giants outfield, Conforto. Yastrzemski, well, we want to we probably, Lamonte we Wade. Want one top outfielder here, don't we? Um, Tucker? Yeah, we want yeah. Tucker, right? So, yeah, definitely. definitely uh, Yanni Tucker. Air probably a catcher then. He's expen- He's kind of expensive, but you can yeah, afford we him the, if we have, we're playing we Air next. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was our short Second base. Um, Gunner. I have – I want to play Ellie. Yeah. Afford. Afford. Gunner is all a gunner. Let's see, Gunner and if we went Gunner and Ellie, I don't think we could do it. No. Yeah, there's not enough. Cheap second baseman exists. Ezekiel Duran is now second base eligible. He's fallen off a cliff a little bit. Adam Frazier's the second baseman. Westberg. I mean, uh, Galoff. Yeah, I'll use, here. Yeah, I'll use Galoff again. That's fine. Galoff. Five K for a third baseman or shortstop. Let's go. I, mean, I guess that fits I mean, Bregman, right? Bregman and then Gunner? Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah, I got perfect. Keller, Wu, Diaz, O'Hearn, Geloff, Bregman, Henderson, Hicks, Conforto, and Tucker. Uh, gives us a three-man Houston stack here. Uh, going up against Colorado, we got our Baltimore stack. Uh, we got our one-off Geloff play, and we got a uh, San Francisco bat here against Cincinnati. So that's our first lineup, our first look here. Uh, on the main slate, James and I will be back live at 5 o'clock Eastern to break all of this down for you. Uh, so make sure to tune back in here 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern time for another update, breakdown, lineup, going over, answer all your questions for all of you. James and I will be back later. Good luck. We'll talk to you then.